The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Nikki Clark Show. We're taping here live at the White Elephant 366 Queen Street East. And how's everybody doing? Oh, I love it. Great energy in the room. All right. The weather outside is frightful, but the people in, in here are so delightful. And I'm glad that you uh, uh, were not able to make it to the Chris Brown concert and you, you came here. So thank you very much for that. Uh, that concert was canceled. So we'll talk a little bit more about that. So. Um, before I get into anything else, uh, let me ask you, what time is it? Hot Topics! That's right, it's time for Hot Topics, and please welcome the very hot Andre Johnson here on the Hot Topics. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. So how, how was your week? Um, pretty, pretty good. It was pretty good. Successful. Successful? Yeah. yeah. I like the way you heal so quickly. You had a little bit of an injury not too long ago, and you're back. Um, actually, my, my, my hip, I, yeah. I hit it, I don't know how, and I just couldn't walk for a couple of days. But I went to the Cairo, I was seeing, I was seeing the Cairo practice, the physio, the doctor, I seen everybody in like three days. You had like a team behind you and you're back. I, I had to get here, I had to be here. <laughs> Fantastic, well, thank you for that. Um, but yeah, there's been a lot going on. How many people saw the Oscars? Make some noise if you saw the Oscars. <laughs> I was so surprised to hear Lady Gaga sing so beautifully. She sang uh, the theme of Sound of Music. Wasn't that gorgeous? Like angelic. I think her background is musical theater. Is that right? Yeah. So you can certainly tell. She sounded like Julie Andrews almost. What do you What do you think of that? Did like you hear Gaga. that? She's cool. She's cool, Lady yeah. Gaga. She's different. Yeah. yeah. I like her style. What do you think about her meat outfits? Um, she's very different. Yeah. She's very different, and it's good to be different sometimes. Yeah, the uniqueness of it, yeah. yeah. Um, some controversy, though, happened uh, on the red carpet at the Oscars. Did you hear about that not-so-cool comment that Juliana Rancic made about uh, the beautiful Zenyatta Coleman's dreadlocks? Ouch. Um, did you hear about that? Yep. What do you think? Uh, well, it's jealousy for one. You think it's jealousy? Yeah. You think it's jealousy? Make some noise if you think it's a little bit of hateration. Yeah, it is. She was drinking some haterade. Yeah, yeah. Um, she, there's, no, there's no reason for her to make that comment anyway. No. Um, yeah, but I, um, she apologized this morning. Oh, she apologized profusely. Yeah, and, she and, apologized. Yeah, that was a good look to yeah. do that. She, she, she had to. Yeah, for people who don't know um, what happened, um, Zenyatta Coleman is a beautiful actress and she has gorgeous uh, dreadlocks and Juliana Rancic made a comment that it smelled like patchouli oil. Um, and, and in reference to that, it, it's she was being interviewed on Fashion Police. Now, Fashion Police, apparently, they make, you know, kind of off-the-cuff remarks about people's fashion style. So she went there, but the intent wasn't to offend. It was to say something, but the result was offensive. But she went on TV, and she apologized profusely for um, offending Zenyatta. So hey, anyway, we got to move on. But it did happen. Yeah. Uh, Chris Brown, as I mentioned before, uh, his uh, Between the Sheets concert got canceled today and yesterday at Montreal, so a lot of people are really upset. It was a sold-out show both nights. Yeah. So, you know, if you, you know, made your, if you purchased those tickets, you can get a refund, apparently. Um, so you got to go to Ticketmaster and get your money back. But what do you think of that? His legal woes have been slowing him down. He was denied entry into Canada. That's why he couldn't perform. Everyone, everyone know that, like, if you commit a crime, crime anywhere in the world, you cannot come across the border. You can't come here. Right. And Chris Brown is, is rap sheet is this long. Like, <laughs> yeah, from Rihanna days, right? Yeah, so, I mean, we should have known. I mean, they should have known, because I knew. When I heard he was coming, I'm like, okay, I know he's not going to cross the water. Like, you knew, I knew right? that. Of course, I would have never bought a ticket. How many people figured that out, that he probably was not likely did we to know? come? Did we know? Yep. Yeah. We thought he had permission. We thought he had permission, at least from the it, promoter. It, it, took, it, it, it takes a long time. It takes a long time. It doesn't have, like, like they don't care about money over here, really. No. So, it doesn't matter how much money he has. It's going to take time. It's going to take time. Yeah, at least 18 months. All right. Yeah, and I mean, this incident just happened like two years ago. 
Right. So it's still fresh. Yeah, and yeah. he was still coming in other crimes while he was doing that. So, so he's, he's young. The, the bad boy thing still hasn't left him. So yes. we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, and then um, the heartbreaking story of three-year-old Elijah Marsh um, died uh, so, so horribly, uh, froze, you know, that's... I don't know, heart-wrenching, but um, crowdfunding, uh, I think, was created by the family or the friends of the family, and they uh, were able to um, get about $177,000 in donations towards the family, so, I mean, it can't replace the loss of a, you know, a little baby, but it, it could certainly help with costs of funeral arrangements and all that. What do you think? Well, how did he get outside? When yeah, how did he get how did outside? No one, how did no one see him? For, for six hours, yeah. it, it's pretty sad. I, I don't know what I would do. I don't know. That's a, that's a painful death. Very, yeah. very, yeah. It's pretty sad. Um, the money, I think the funeral cost about $20,000. I mean, we knew that going into it. So, I mean, people just felt bad and they just wanted to do something to make the family feel better. So, I think the money was good. Yeah. yeah it's, not gonna bring back, it's not gonna bring back the life, but no. it just shows that, shows how much support we have in the city. Yeah, so. yeah, which was nice. Yeah, there's lots of compassion. And I think they were able to raise um, 125000 in 24 hours. So there's a lot of generous people in, yes. in Toronto, you know, and definitely everyone um, resonated from that story. Did you hear about the underground tunnel <laughs> in Toronto? Uh, police discovered a bunker uh, all the way to York, the um, University of York. Underground tunnel. I wonder if that has any connection with the Pan Am Games. That, that's so confusing. What do you think? I, I, I think it's so many things. I think it's, I don't know, maybe it's to lead people to the stadium so they could make money. But it take, it, it, I mean, the tunnel was professionally done. So I don't, I, I don't think that's what it was. Maybe something else. Uh, I think you have an idea of what you don't want to say. Because yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know you can be a little controversial. Uh, no. No. Okay, you declined. All right, no problem. Um, Fifty Shades of Grey came out Valentine's Day. How many people saw it? Make some noise if you did see it. Carmela saw it. <laughs> Only one person? Only one person. On. I saw it on Friday. No one else? No, you have to see it. Yeah. Okay, Carmela, you liked it? Okay. Did, did, did you, you like see it? it? Uh, well, I read the book, so I, I was comparing it to the book. And... Um, uh, there were things that I liked about it and things that I didn't. I didn't like the ending. Yeah, a lot of people did not like the ending. Sucks. Yeah, it was kind of abrupt. Sucks. Yeah. So I heard that. I heard a few people said it wasn't really good. It was expecting more. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure. But and then I heard like this psychologist. She was saying, pe telling people not to go see it because it's basically corrupting people's mind. I mean, our young kids' mind is how they should live their life. Um, but. I don't think we should base anything off of that because there's other movies out there that we should we, we shouldn't see. We shouldn't have our kids see, but we still haven't seen it. Right. So right. I don't think movie, the movies have anything to do with it, really. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. This isn't any sex scenes. Like it wasn't even comparable to the book. They took out all the sex scenes. Hmm. Yeah, okay. It was very mild compared to other uh, movies. Okay. It's a love story. Okay. All so, right. We would say a chick flick. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely a chick flick. Yeah, yeah. We'd, be, we'd be in torture seeing the movie without, without our partner. <laughs> well, uh, February is uh, Black History Month, and uh, we only have a few more days left of uh, events. But uh, I was very happy to um, uh, MC one of the um, events on Sunday, a Black History Month event. And uh, in the audience was uh, counselor for Ward 30, Paula Fletcher. Uh, she met me and um, we talked about having um, my media students, Clark Media Arts, uh, involved in the opening of a new park in Riverdale um, named after the first black politician in Toronto, William Peyton Hubbard. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, so thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. I've been, I've been doing a lot of presentations to young children and um, you know, just trying to find out what they know of black history and, and talking about how uh, it's, it's about celebrating the advancement um, and the talents that uh, blacks have brought to the world and, and all the positive things related to that. So, yeah. What do you... Um, black History Month is... I mean, there's a lot of things about Black History Month that we don't know. 
that we should know. Right. But they don't tell us. They don't teach us that. In the curriculum, school yeah. curriculum, right. We just have to do our own research. Right. To, to basically find what it's really about. Um, there's a lot of people, black people, who discovered a lot of things. But I'm not somebody else actually takes the credit for it. Um, we don't know why, but <coughs> it's, it's there. Mm -hmm. But I don't really want to get into too much details. I, I study black history, and I'm very, I guess, controversial <laughs> when it comes to that. So I just don't want to get into it too tough. But yeah. there's a lot of things that we should know as black people about yeah. black history. Month. They don't really teach us. They hide it from us. And if we don't read, we won't know. So it's about being proactive about your own education. Yeah, if you want to okay. know about your history, you should read your history. Someone else shouldn't tell you about your history. Okay. We should find it outside. Well, you should find it and teach your kids. Okay. That's a good point. That's a good point. That's a very good point. All right, preach. Um, so what, what do we have in front here? We've got some uh, attractive boxes. Tell me about that, and um, I'll tell you something about what I'm going to do with it. Okay. So... I'm, I'm a fitness guy. I've we can tell. <laughs> we can tell. I, I've been working out for over, over 10 years, and I've always heard that when you gain muscle, you burn fat. And there's a lot of people that out there that want to burn fat, but it's hard to go into the gym every day to do this, and it takes a long time. In the gym, we say it takes three to six weeks to lose, it takes, three, no, it takes six weeks to lose three to six pounds. Um, Zen Body is a product that's, it's, it's in a company, Nikki will talk to us later about the company, but Zen Body is a product that helps people to lose weight <laughs> instantly, like, I, I would say instantly, because within the first week, you will see like a massive change. You can lose anywhere from five pounds in a week with Zen Body. The first five pounds might be water weight, but we want to lose water weight. Um, I've, I, I, I just don't talk about a product unless I believe in the product. This product has been in Canada for two months. Um, I had to do my own experiment. I, I know people who want to, you know, basically lose weight. I recommended this to them. I'm like, listen, this product is amazing. It's all natural. You should try it because I know what your goals are. I know what you want to do. Um, she tried it within for seven days, she's calling me and telling me that she lost seven pounds and she lost inches. She can fit in clothes that she bought years ago now. Um, every week, she would call me and give me feedback on how the product is working. Um, it's been a month and she has lost over 15 pounds and she has lost a lot of inches on her waist. So now she's getting smaller. Zen Body, it burns fat. It doesn't burn muscles. You keep your muscles right here because we have amino acid here that helps you, with, helps you to retain the muscle and the protein here, which helps to build the muscle as well. The Zen Shape, this is basically, um, it suppresses how you eat. Um, when, I'm Jamaican. When I was growing up, my mom used to give me this big amount of food to eat and say, if you don't eat it, I'm gonna whoop your butt. <laughs> um, so I was trained to eat a lot. <laughs> but that's not what we're supposed to eat. We're supposed to eat in small portions. So if you practice to eat big, you're gonna always eat big portions. What Zen Shape does, it controls the portion size, how you eat. You get what I mean? Yeah. Now, this has been the most successful product on the market. I mean, it speaks for itself. I know, I'll, go ahead. Is there a, uh, an appetizer uh, like that, like does it enhance your appetite? Yeah, yeah. so yes it does. Oh. Yeah, so you don't crave sugar, you don't crave chocolate, you don't crave candy, you don't crave anything. It just balances how you're supposed to eat. Okay. It brings you back to where you were before. All right. Um, I recommend this product. Um, Nikki, I recommend this product. Nikki know, <laughs> Nick, Nikki, Nikki know a lot of people who have been successful with this product. Yeah. Um, I like 41 pounds in a month for one individual, a mutual friend Cap of ours. Catherine Nichols, she lost, yeah. it's actually um, 45 days. Catherine Nichols, she lost um, 40 pounds. In, it's incredible. Yeah, and she's going to She didn't go to right the gym. Now. And she hasn't been to the gym. She didn't go to the gym doing it, so. And it's all, it's all natural. If you don't believe, you can take it to your doctor. He can tell you it is all natural. You can take it. Um, Nikki's going to be doing Yeah, I got, I got the products today, so I'm officially starting Zen Body. <laughs> so I am going to be uh, recording my progress, and I'm going to let you know how it works. Okay, so are you with me? You want to take the Zen Body challenge with me? Make some noise. All right. <laughs> 
I she, will, she, will, she will keep you updated on her progress yeah, I'm on, on the next show. And I mean, she's, it's, it's going to speak for itself. I'm excited. And I'm not, excited. Selling, I'm not selling the product. Um, Nikki's I'm, I'm the spokesmodel for it, so uh, definitely um, I'm going to keep you posted. And also, if you want more information about it, I'll, I'll let you know how to get to that too. But Andre, thank you so much thank for always much. being so supportive and helpful. And yeah, we're going to be right back with some more great guests. So don't go anywhere. You're here on the Nikki Clark Show. The Nikki Clark Show: Transforming Lives, One Story at a Time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. relationship and taking many years actually to heal from that I'm at that place where I'm ready because love is really beautiful and I, I love the experience of love and uh, this is the song that I'd like to sing called as soon as I get home All right. <laughs> Thank you. 
the Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. Sitting beside me now is a real estate broker from Remax. Please welcome Carmela Zita Capillaris. You look thank beautiful. I love that color. Blue. Oh, thank you. And thank you for having me, Nikki. Oh, you're more than welcome. More than welcome. So let's get into a little bit of your background and experience in real estate. When did that evolve? Okay, well, um, I actually come from a long line of real estate people. My whole family has been into real estate uh, from an investment point of view and otherwise. I've been um, in real estate myself since I was 16, licensed wow. at 18, and bought my first house when I was 20. Are you so, kidding? Yeah, That's so huge. I've been uh, selling and investing ever since and making people's dream of home ownership come true. So that's my passion. Okay. Yeah. So you're, you were nurtured by uh, a family of uh, real estate professionals, and, yes. uh, and that's how you got into the biz. biz uh, so, what other uh, you know, designations do you have? You're a real estate broker. What other things are um, attached to you? In addition to uh, being a real estate broker, um, I'm a, a husband and wife team. My husband is also in the business. And uh, I have a, um, uh, an ABR, which is an accredited buyer representative, which means okay. I can work with sellers. But I also have a special experience to work with buyers. Right. Uh, I have my IRES, which is my International Real Estate uh, Specialist License, and my seniors, um, a special designation that I have with seniors because that's a whole different market too. How is that different? It's different because seniors need to, um, they, they get their whole family involved and usually, you know, it's not just uh, they're going to buy a house, but they're moving into a senior's home, and there's a lot of estate things and legalities to look after them. So it's very, very different from selling to a first-time buyer or any other um, move-up buyer. Okay. Yeah, and I also want to mention that I have my staging certificate, and uh, that allows me to give my clients uh, free staging and free consultation. Uh, we have a warehouse full of furniture and accessories right. that we use on all our listings. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah, yeah that, that certainly helps to um, enhance the look of, of the home to exactly. uh, get it fast, get it sold faster. Exactly, right? I think every house should be staged. Okay. Every house should be staged to get the most money possible. To get the most money. What's the market like now? Well, Nikki, the market is really good right now. Okay. Yeah, the market is really hot. And uh, this is actually the spring market. Most okay. people don't realize that the spring market begins in February. So anybody who puts their house on the market right now will get top dollar for their house. You hear that? Top dollar that's for good. the house. And that's because we have a shortage of inventory. Uh, there's very few properties for sale. So when there's very few properties, it's all about supply and demand. Those properties that do put their house up for, those people that do put their house up for sale in, uh, at a reasonable price and staged well will get um, the most money right now. Okay. Yeah, because once we get into March, uh, March, March, April, May, there'll be a lot of properties and you have to price more competitively. Right. Okay. Yeah. Now that makes so sense. This is a good time. This is a really good time. So the the team that you have, you know, put together and that you lead, what separates you from other brokers out there? Oh, that's a good question. Um, I think what separates us from other uh, brokers and agents is that um, we're honest and truthful with our clients. Okay. Like we don't do a sales job on them. Uh, we tell them the truth. We give them the facts. Uh, give them our expertise right. and knowledge about the area and advise them as much as possible. We don't sugarcoat anything. 
uh, just to get their, their house up for sale or their listing. We're very honest. I think another thing that we do that's special is we have uh, great negotiation skills and closing skills. Mm -hmm. We uh, tend to our clients' needs right away. We answer their calls immediately uh, by text, email, or Skype and uh, we give them regular feedback, I would say. And probably what some people don't do and we do is we have a one-stop shop. Okay. So when you come to us, we provide you with mortgage brokers, uh, lawyers, um, uh, renovators, painters, anything that you need to get the house uh, up for up sale, to mm -hmm. up to par. So and you go one place, that's us. You don't have to go around and look for things yourself. I think that's fantastic. Yeah, so that helps people a lot. Yeah, that uh, certainly helps with time and management of uh, getting your house sold. Exactly. So you, you, you handle the real estate beautifully. You've been doing this for a number of years. Yes. But you also, you're involved in networking events as well. Can you talk about some of the things you do there? Yes. And, and you have one coming up, another a special yes. one. So uh, I've been doing real estate uh, for 26 years and uh, we've been doing client events and, and uh, parties uh, for 20 years, but now we've adapted it and um, we're trying a different concept because we researched and we found out that uh, most of the business comes from social media and internet so right true. now. Mm -hmm. That's where the client connections are coming from, that's where the business connections are coming from. It's all social media. So we felt uh, most people, they don't really take it a step further. So we thought we'd take it a step further and take those people out of social media and bring them face-to-face uh, -face contact by networking. And so we do very um, eclectic networking events with famous people, as yourself, in famous <laughs> places. And um, another thing that's very different is also uh, most all most uh, networking groups are usually uh, women with women, or realtors with realtors, or media with right. media. Well, our group includes everybody. Okay. We we include the whole sector. It's very inclusive. Yeah, we find that um, that creates well business collaboration together. Yeah. I totally believe in power numbers. So it's really about um, getting everyone together and, and creating synergy. And uh, that's uh, networking events are incredible. There's only so much I think you can market into social media, but really um, it's about uh, connecting with people and establishing relationships, like long term relationships, in order to build co-build you know, right. businesses, so it's, it's right, a really important right. in part. In order to build on those relationships. Absolutely. Like a lot of people that are here, I met on Facebook. There you go. And uh, right now they're like great friends and they're great business connections. And uh, if it wasn't for Facebook, and then of course you have to take it that step You've further. You've got to take it a step further. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, then nothing happens. And so this is how we're, we're building uh, connections and we're trying to uh, create wealth for everyone through our networking groups. We just formed um, the ultimate networking group less than a month ago, and there's already 1,200 members. Wow. And from, <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. It's working. And so from that, uh, we created um, networking events, and um, the one that Nikki is going to be at is at the Shangri-La. We had two already at the uh, at Lack of Steel and Ten Restaurant by the Lake, and the one at Shangri-La will feature Nikki Clark. Oh, oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so that'll be uh, March 14th, right? Yeah, March 14th. Uh, the tickets are online through Eventbrite. Uh, there's free valet parking. There's a champagne breakfast with Mimosa. Oh, I can't uh, wait. Continental, and a tour of the uh, million dollar condos. In wow. order to uh, in or end a business leadership panel. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you. I'm so happy to be a, a part of that um, you know, yeah. wonderful panel of speakers. But I think I'm going to talk a little bit about how to create a buzz online, how to use some of the social media agencies to um, you know, help you get some attention out there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. That's, that's amazing. Yes. And, and how thank can people, you. no, thank you. How can people reach you, Carmela, about real estate or getting tickets for the networking okay, events? Okay, well, possibly they could get tickets through the Nikki Clark Show. Okay. Uh, or they can email me at uh, info at capillaris.com or go to Facebook and um, put in 
the ultimate um, networking event at Shangri-La Hotel. And it'll pop up all the information. Right, and I'm sure Nikki will have it on her Facebook page as well. I will. Yes. You definitely will see it. Yeah, so we're looking forward to that March 14th at 10 a.m. Thank you so much for all you do. It's a pleasure. Thanks. All right. Carmela, Zita, Capilaris, everyone. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. speaker and educator and uh, the author of uh, two compelling books please welcome Nikki Vernon Johnson to the show thank you welcome, welcome. you look lovely thank, thank you, you very much oh, you're welcome you as well yeah thanks very much um, now I'm trying to remember where we connected I think it was maybe over the summertime at coffee and cheesecake that's one of those right it was events. one of those networking events it was um, with Paula that tasted and then from there we were just following each other and here we are and here we are <laughs> and here we are yeah I like how things happen yes. that way organically yes so you have um, two books let's let's talk about those uh, yes I have books two we have the, the one is called my eyes on so the first one is titled my eyes can see a year of reflection and insight and uh, my author's name is Andrea Nicole if I could speak to that um, Andrea is really my middle name and it means strength and Nicole means victory of the people. So I just felt that it would be really fitting to, to have that name, um, being that the topics that I, that I write about. Um, what and, are the topics? Well, both of these books, well, the second book is titled 101 Inspirational Quotes for Us Rich Chicks. And both of these books were birthed out of my experience. A teacher by profession, and in 2010, I was in a car accident. And, um, I, am, I still have not gone back, but during that time, I would write a lot. Um, I wasn't planning on publishing these books, but was really encouraged by family, friends, and loved ones to do so. And so it really speaks about that time, that journey um, of replacing fear with faith. Um, it speaks about a lot of different things. It speaks about the fact that I was pregnant and I lost a child. It speaks about post-traumatic stress. It speaks about a daily life of me, um, you know, just always being placed on a pedestal because I could do it. And when all of this had happened, I was still doing it, but it felt very foreign. So although I was embraced with love um, with family members, um, it, it was always second nature for me to just write. And so that's where I found solace in writing. Okay, that's beautiful. Yeah. It's very healing, isn't it? It's um, very healing. Yeah, it is very healing. My father said that from the time that I was small, um, there's always paper amongst me. And my husband will attest to that. And your husband's here. Yes, he is. He's uh, in the audience. <laughs> and every night, he's like clearing off the bed with the papers and the writing utensils. Yeah. But um, you know, the, the 101 inspirational quotes for us rich chicks came about because um, I said during that time off, I registered two, business, two businesses, one being rich chicks. And when people hear that, they're like, what's a rich chick? Well, rich in terms of not necessarily monetary wealth or um, material acquisition, but rich in terms of being in mind, um, body, and spirit. Right. And because I was so broken, um, you know, just posing that question, what does it mean to be rich? Well, ri being rich means to be whole. And just using, looking at the word chicks, it having a kind of a derogatory you know name uh, attached to it just using the two as a form of empowerment right so the rich chicks um, business that I registered is you know just looking at the visionary tools to equip women's inward treasures so to speak leading them for a life of richness okay. and that and that's a, a really uh, powerful distinction too as I um, I'm, I made a post about being rich, uh, similarly to what you're saying, yes. and, and that's about um, you know having the simple things can right. make you rich. Uh, yes. A family yes. uh, that loves you, uh, a few good friends, right. a roof over your head, and food. Yes, uh, you're rich. Most definitely. Yeah. Yes. So I, I 
totally uh, resonate with what you're saying. Um, can you read us something? If I'm going to put you on the spot, something from either one of the books that you'd like to share with us. Wow. So we can get kind of a feel for sure. your reflective style. Okay. Already. <clears throat> well, chapter one, I titled it A Journey of a Thousand Miles. And so being an educator in my classroom, that was, uh, it's, it's a Chinese proverb, and that was the classroom motto, and it still remains to be the motto for my life. Um, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So, chapter one, a, a journey of a thousand miles, and it starts off with a quote. Courage is the journey that allows your soul to go where there is no, pain, no path for pain. When a person loses a job, ends a relationship, or battles an illness, the capacity to gain an accurate and deep intuitive understanding of these adverse effects may shake them to the core. Making the decision to embrace the road you are currently traveling on or choosing to resist, react and avoid, the detours placed along your destination may drastically alter your path and cause you to wander to a desolate, unfamiliar place of paralysis instead of propelling you forward to that place of self-growth. I learned that this journey of impending change is probably one of the hardest places to be because the truth of the matter is that this change produces pain and exemplifies the ending of one's life and the beginning of another. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I appreciate your, uh, your candor and you know, openness about you. You know, your journey. And uh, we all have wonderful stories. And yes. that's, that's a beauty of uh, coming together and sharing them yes. and being authentic. Uh -huh. And uh, um, there's a healing that takes place when, you, when you can unload. Yes. Yeah, I, I totally understand that. Right. Now, you, you also, you're a life coach. You're a certified life coach. I'm a certified life coach, okay. yes. And, and when people come to you, um, you know, looking for a little bit of assistance, how do you guide them? Well, being that, not only because of the fact that I went through all of these different things, I feel that learning is, or teaching is learning twice, like first as you prepare right. for your students or your clients, so to speak, and then as you work with them. So, you know. You gotta walk the talk. Right? That's right, yeah. that's right. And so, again, even the name of the business, Rich Life Coaching and Consulting, again, it looks at personal and it looks at, you know, corporate in terms of looking at them, allowing them to, to believe, to achieve, that they too can exceed and um, succeed in their, their daily dreams. You know, whether it's like something in terms of educational or whether it's like sorting out things where grief, you know, just walking them through certain little things, allowing them to address, you know, the, the dark secrets, so to speak, so that they can actually move on, right. move forward and grow. Um, so that whole, that whole being of being rich, the whole in terms of being um, whole in mind, body and spirit is very important because you just not, you cannot just have one without the other. So that's the core foundation mm -hmm. of Rich Life Coaching and Consulting. Okay. And um, you know, just a lot of talking, a lot of support um, where that is concerned. Okay, and, and the thing about being a life coach is uh, you're not um, providing answers. That's right. You're, you're just kind of uh, guiding, them. guiding that's right. gently guiding that's and, right. and allowing your clients to come up with their own conclusions. Yes, that's right, their own conclusion. And that's, that, that's very important that you say that. It's not me imposing anything. It's just suggesting, holding their hand, so to speak, and, and guiding them gently, you know, through the different paths and the detours that they may be taking, you know, on their journey. You know, you will definitely have the detours. You'll have the tests, the trials, and the tribulations. But as you said before, you know, it, it builds character. And, and them realizing that they're not the only ones that are going through it, and it can, you know, there, there's a light at the end of the tunnel, so to speak. Okay, and I, I think that's uh, a powerful thing. Um, I, I'm, I'm gonna speak from my own experience as, um, you know, growing up in the West Indian community. Right. I think uh, there's something that um, we are socialized. Right. Uh, to not chat your business, <laughs> right? So yes. there, there's something that, um, there's a lot that we have to unload, but we are taught not to share it. That's right. But there really is um, a, a powerful healing agent in the sharing. Most definitely. I totally agree with that. And if I may just go back to 2010 where the accident was concerned, when all of these different things were happening to me, and I'm you know, saying, like, this, is not, this is not right. And it was my mom that basically said to me, Nikki, I think you should like, go and speak with someone because the driving anxieties were intense. Mm -hmm. And I used to drive everywhere. Everyone used to call me Michael Andrade and, you know, just, yeah. 
here and there snowing, it doesn't matter. I would get to my destination, but just the impact and the severity of that accident, it really crippled me. And it, that was very difficult for me because of the, the connotations that society places on or the stigmatization of like, you know, going and getting help or, you know, health and wellness or mental right. health issues, et cetera, of that nature, that was difficult. But once I did go and speak with someone, you know, it, it, was, it was a real treat, a real gift for myself yes. because I was normally the one who would always help and give people advice. But when it comes to yourself, and when it came to myself, it was very difficult. Okay. Yeah. But through that, you got through that, yes. and now you're here. Yes, I am. And, and you're helping others. Yes. And uh, we so appreciate um, you know, what you're doing. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this time. And uh, thank you where for can people me. find you? Where can people find me? There's many places. Um, on Facebook, they can find me, uh, Andre Nicole. So it's A N D R E, Axante Goo E, <laughs> Nicole. That's Facebook page. They can also find me on Instagram, um, Andre Nicole Inc. Um, they can find me on Twitter, Andre Nicole Inc. as well too, and has all the information in terms of the books. Um, they are on Amazon, Barnes and Noble, xlibre.com. So that's x l i b r i s dot com, the bookstore, and um, they're they're in the format of hardcover, paperback, and ebook. And ChaptersIndigo.ca. It's also in the format of ebooks. And um, you can also come out to Chapter Scarborough, April the 11th. I'll be having a book signing. And, you know, stay close to the social media aspect and find out when the launches are going to be. And there's some other books in the works as well, too. Okay, that's awesome. Yes. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Come Thank back you anytime. I will. I will. All right, we'll be right back. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. And uh, I am so happy to introduce the the twelve year old genius, uh, Chef Daniel Hamilton, to the show. Please make welcome. Yeah. And we also have uh, lovely assistant Sonia Johnson. So make some noise. Yeah. Now, Chef Daniel, you've been cooking since you're four years old. A little too low. <laughs> uh, it was about five or six. Oh, okay. <laughs> five, all right. A mature age of five. <laughs> sure. so, what inspired you to cook? Most five-year-olds don't think about actually Well, going um, actually, when my mom came home from work, she was so exhausted, so she just hit the couch. Aww. And I told her I was going to make her some food, and she probably thought I was going to make her some peanut butter sandwich. Like most five-year-olds make, right? Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So then, uh, when she woke up, I made her a grilled salmon with asparagus and eggplant. Oh, wow. And I learned that by just watching her, so, yeah. That's but huge. I wasn't sure if she was mad at me. Because I, I cooked, I wasn't sure if she was mad at me because, you know, I cooked without her being awake. And, and, and turning on the stove without exactly. asking permission. Wow. Um, but were you mad, Mom? Mom wasn't mad. I was confused. A little confused. What's going on here? Is that my kid? Wow, okay, so the journey begins at five years old, and um, why the love of cooking? That's, I mean, it's an art form. Well, uh, I like to eat. <laughs> I like so to I, create. I'm a foodie, too. Uh, it's fun creating my own meal, and I don't really have to um, wait for mom to make it for me. <laughs> like, I make my own lunch, so I do everything. You're amazing. Okay, so you, you put some things together. What are we going to... Uh, what are we going to learn? What are you going to teach us? Okay, well, I'm going to be making a sandwich with egg, zucchini, onion, and mushrooms. And it's going to have some arugula, basil, and tomatoes in it. Oh, so what's it called? Um, it's called my vegetarian sandwich. All right, go go ahead. Okay. Uh, let's have some cooking music maybe in the background. So Sonia is going to help okay. you. So Here. walk us through it. So first I'm going to first take the bread off. What kind of bread is it? Does it matter what type of bread? It doesn't matter, but this okay. is caraway. It has like the seed inside of it. Okay. It's very good. Um, uh, Sonia, would you like to cut the tomatoes? So those are cherry tomatoes. Yes. Right? And first I'm going to put some arugula on the bread. Okay. 
nice. So arugula on the bread, and then Sonia is cutting up some cherry tomatoes. Yeah, those are gonna go on top. I'm gonna What's that? zucchini. This zucchini. is zucchini right here. Okay, it's grilled zucchini on yeah. top. Yeah, grilled zucchini. Okay. My mouth is watering. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't had supper. Is it uh, glazed with anything? Uh, no, it's just no. regular grilled zucchini. Just regular. You don't need okay. to glaze it. You if you, you can, it. if you want. Okay. <laughs> And then what's on there? It looks like caramelized... Caramelized onions, yes. Okay. Put some onions on top. Put anything on it, like soya sauce, or...? No, if you want, you can, but I use I usually just put a little olive oil. Olive oil, okay. And I use coconut oil, is that good? Yeah, coconut oil yeah. is good. Okay. And, then and these are some, oops, <laughs> these are some mushrooms right here. I'll get rid of that. Okay. And I'm gonna put the, then the cherry tomatoes. And then I'm going to put the um, eggs. Now, there's something that you talk about called plating. What is that? OK, so it's when um, you pretty much just, it's pretty much just cooking. But then at the end, you try to make your food look pretty, like eye appealing. Like art. Yeah. OK. All right, are we going to do that today? Yes. OK, fantastic. So <laughs> sure. Sonia's finished, finished cooking cutting. The, cookie walls. I mean, cutting up the more. cherry tomatoes. <laughs> no, that's fine. Now so uh, now we're going to put that right on top. You want to put that on tops? And what's Sonia wearing, by the way? Oh, uh, that's, familiar, that's that person <laughs> on there. Is that you? Yeah, it's a t-shirt. It's uh, quiteabite.com. It's the website. And quite a bite? Yeah. I love it. And it's, it's also, quite we also have a YouTube channel called Quite a Bite. And then um, on Facebook, I'm yeah. Junior Chef Daniel. That's so, yeah. Woo! Very good. <laughs> We're all inspired. <laughs> Okay. So how often do you cook? Like every day? Every day. Every day? Like every day. How many meals? Like breakfast, lunch, dinner? Um, depends. depends. But yeah, usually. When's your next dinner party? I don't usually have too many dinner parties. Sure? Like we'll have like a family gathering mm -hmm. and like everyone would bring something there. Like a potluck? Yeah. Okay, what's your signature meal? What do people expect from you when you come? Ribs. Ribs. <laughs> you don't play around. Okay, <laughs> so we've got that. Then what's next? Okay, now we're going to put the eggs right on top. And it's just like fried egg. Just fried I egg. I like how you kept it like circular. I can't make my egg circular. How do you do that? Uh, well, there's a few tricks on doing it. Another way, you can like um, have an onion and you crack the egg inside of it and the onion just comes right off. I didn't know that. Did you know that? No. The pepper one. Yeah, and there's another yeah. one with the pepper too. Okay. Learning. All right. And you can also do it with bread. Like cut a hole inside the bread and you can crack it in there. No, no idea. Okay. So you're putting two <laughs> I'm putting two, eggs two fried eggs on. Okay. It's going to... Okay. It's so pretty. And I'm gonna put this on the plate. Got a plate here. I'll use this one. It's fine. I got this one. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, and we're gonna chop some basil. You wanna chop that, please? Okay. So what's that book over there? Oh, well, this uh, is um, some basil. Future Chefs. Are you with it's, it? Yeah, I have my recipe in it. It is a dessert. Wow. It's called. See, there's a little. Little thing. thing. Yeah, it says right here, Daniel Hamilton, which is my name. And then there's a little um, uh, story about how I started and what happened to me. Like, I've also been on a TV show called Rachel vs. Guy Kids Cook Off. So it was a cooking competition wow. on the food network. That's amazing. Where and then look at this book, Future Chefs, um, by Remin Ganeshwar. Yeah, it's just regular, regular like, co cook store. Regular, yeah. indigo, okay. So um, there's also a, my recipe, super fruit crumble. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's like um, I like see, a, you get all excited when you talk about your food. <laughs> so, <And>, um, <laughs> <laughs> so it's like an apple crumble, which is another thing I make, but super fruit crumble. So it has blueberries, strawberries, plum, peaches, and I make a crumble that goes on top of it and I put it in the oven. And you can serve it with Greek yogurt or a mixture of ricotta cheese and cinnamon and cream. We're going to be best friends because <laughs> I like the way you talk food. Um, any plans of having your own restaurant? Um, I would like to. I'm not opening it right now. <laughs> but maybe <laughs> later on down the road. Yeah. Okay, so the basil is all chopped up. What's next? Okay, so then, uh, here, thanks. <laughs> I'm going to put a little basil right on top of it. Okay. Right there. That's a sandwich. All right. Yeah. Chef Daniel, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Very proud of you. Thank you, Sonia, for your help.
The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. Now are the uh, husband and wife team, the co-founders of For Real Custom Tees. Please welcome Tracy and Alistair Thomas. <laughs> and I see you're sporting some For Real Tees. Let's see what you've got there. I like the little hot pink. And then uh, uh, Alistair is modeling the ForReal.com. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Well, first off, I want to thank you again for uh, generously you know, sponsoring the Nikki Clark Show with t-shirts. Uh, we appreciate it. The audience members appreciate it when they, you know, do their new time and, and participate mm -hmm. in karaoke. <laughs> That's what they get. But, um, you know, I want to say that, you know, you do a lot for the community and I uh, really appreciate, you know, all the efforts that you, you do to empower women, Tracy. And, mm -hmm. uh, but before we get into that, uh, why Pharrell custom, sorry, for real custom cheese. What, what inspired you to get into that and, and why name that for real? Ah, uh, well, um, for real custom, for real the name and the shop, you're looking at a very beginning and a very present, not even end. So um, the name pretty much is inspired by, it's a, it's a weird, funny story. Um, when I started, I was an illustrator, still am. And what happened is my brother, he wanted me to go into business for myself, being an illustrator. I needed a name. So I went to my mother and I told her, I said, okay, you know what? I need a name to advertise who I am, what I'm like. And she said, well, you need something to describe the kind of guy you are. You know, you're very outspoken. You're very opinionated. You're loud. You know, you're funny. You have, you know, your own ways, you know. And I said, yeah, for real, you're right. And she said, here, here it is. And I said, what? You just said it. Said what? <laughs> and that went on for like a minute, you know? Like, you just said it. Said what? You know? And for real. Oh, and I had my big O moment right there. <laughs> so um, from since that moment back in 1997, right, all the way till now, it got to the point where we became a custom t-shirt shop, right? It's been an amazing journey, a uh, long journey but um, a memorable one. So mm -hmm. we got to the point where now we have our own store and what we do is we provide custom t-shirts for the community or pretty much anyone who wears t-shirts, that's our, our market. Mm -hmm. If you need something to cover your torso, that's where we come in, <laughs> <laughs> right? And a lot yes. of us need that. Yeah, <laughs> most of us kind of need that. Yes. That's a good market though. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I've seen you, I mean, I've come in, um, came in a couple of times and uh, there was this young man, I think he was 15 years old and he's like, Alistair, I have an idea for a t-shirt and I like the way that you sat down with him and you, and you just, you know, worked with him and created a t-shirt together. I remember that. I remember that guy. Yeah, that was, that was a Kodak moment. Yeah. It was really sweet. So you, you really take the time to work one-on-one, -on -one, especially with the youth. So that's mm -hmm. great. Well, with anybody. With anybody. Right? Um, I, I, I love creativity. I love ideas. Tracy loves creativity. She loves ideas. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest things I like doing is drawing that creativity from you. Mm -hmm. You know? I love just going into your head. You know, what do you got? And we just talk back and forth. And I just take it out of you. And you turn to awesomeness. And you stick it on that t-shirt. And you go <laughs> out and just feel awesome. He's so it. good at it. He's yeah. so good at it. Like people will come into the shop and they'll have a concept or an idea of what they want to get done and he just knows how to draw it out and when they walk out they're just so happy and so pleased with what he he's able to produce you know and it's unique it's very unique yeah, i've seen a lot of the, the uh, t-shirts very very amazing oh. so great work mm -hmm. uh, how did you how do you manage working together i mean uh your husband and wife you work closely together do you do you ever clash or is it always <laughs> harmony because you always seem to be you know we have our together. moments what i think of, you want an honest answer <laughs> 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 do we clash <laughs> well okay well the thing is like me and tracy we work we work very well together 
mm. right? I have to admit, we do make a pretty good tea, right? We, we, we get pretty far, right? But every now and then, you know, the go-karts kind of run into each other, mm. where, of course, I have the right ideas of the answers and such, but... He it, thinks so. But it gets... <laughs> But sometimes it gets overpowered by Tracy and stuff. Like, but sometimes I, you know, I have to kind of like lay back and just, you know, think. I don't know everything, yeah. although my delusions of grandeur tells me so. <laughs> right. So. Um, I think we're a good balance. Yeah. Yeah, we're a good balance. Where he's, he's more of the production side. I'm more of the business side. So he's, he's always thinking of you know designs and and um, you know just dealing with the the flyers and the, and the advertising in that sense uh, where I'm the one that I go out to the events and I try and get the clients and I call and that sort of thing you know so it's an equal balance. It's a good, yeah, it's a good, it's a good chemistry. Um, how I see it is I always said that Frill didn't start making money until Tracy came along. Mm -hmm. Right? Because you, you love it so much. It's your passion. So. Yeah. I, I, I have mm -hmm. ideas and stuff but she's like all right let's get some dollars behind it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, gosh, like what a concept, mm -hmm. I don't have to work anymore, yeah. isn't that cool, right? I, I'm my own boss, right? <laughs> so, um, but it's, it's pretty cool. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, where can people find you? Where are you located? Uh, we're at 1900 Danforth Avenue, so we're just um, uh, a block and a half west of Woodbine Station. And uh, you can also find us online, uh, forreal.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Uh, just look for For Real Custom Tees. We're on Twitter at For Real Clothing. So yeah, check us out. Okay. And, and getting to your empowerment, I just wanted to mention that you, you have a launch coming up, right? Yes, you I do. That? Uh, so my husband and I, we actually started a magazine last year called Soulful Image Magazine. Uh, it's a faith-based magazine and it's used to inspire, encourage, and uplift people. Mm -hmm. Um, as you know, everybody goes through their challenges through life, so we like to take people who have gone through, um, you know, maybe something special, circumstances, and just showcase what God has done through their life, how God has brought them through, and just what they're doing with their life now, and the amazing things and ways that they're contributing to the community. So uh, we're having our official launch on April the 18th at the Gospel Cafe. Uh, it's going to be amazing. We're going to have um, poetry, we're going to have a fashion show, we're going to have speakers, uh, networking is going to happen. Uh, it's just going to be amazing, so I hope you all can come out. Uh, check me out on Facebook, uh, look, look up for our page, Soulful Image Magazine, and you'll find more information there. So, yes. Thank you so much. Thank you, Alistair. Thank you. You're amazing. And uh, your website one more time. Uh, Forreal.com and uh, soulfulimagemag.com. Okay, awesome. Thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. Uh, I like to make jewelry and I love to uh, enjoy the beauty of uh, custom-made jewelry. These pieces are done by the co-founders of the Gem Expo and the owners of Blue Sapphire Beads. Please welcome Salim Murani and Zuleika Nour Mohammed. Thanks, Becky. Thanks for having us. You're welcome, you're welcome. And I, do you see this lovely uh, ensemble put together here? Um, so like I made this for me. Isn't it beautiful? Can you describe what you did? For your birthstone, December 20th, your birthstone would be uh, turquoise. Turquoise so, is my birthstone. Yes, yeah. yes. So what I've done is I've put turquoise as well as aquamarine on there. They're both calming stones that help center. They're really one of those spiritual stones. And as I was saying to someone earlier, stones are quite a stone that'll help with prosperity with a lot of different emotional things. So I've got turquoise in your earrings as well as in your uh, necklace. 
and there's turquoise that are hand uh, carved in the front as well as turquoise from Arizona in the back and it's all with sterling silver and Swarovski crystal. Oh my gosh, I'm so, so blessed. Thank you. It's absolutely You're welcome. Beautiful. You my pleasure. Every day. Thank you again. Um, so tell me a little bit about the GEM Expo. Well, the GEM Expo started about three years ago. Um, in Toronto, the sh some of the shows were dying, so we decided as a couple to start up our own show, uh, not knowing how much work it would be. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, between the two of us, we have uh, five kids. Wow. Congratulations. <laughs> how old are they? <laughs> see, seven, eight... 15, 15, 15, 15 18. 18. Do you have twins? No, he has two of his own, and then I had three. Okay. So I brought uh, three girls, and he has a daughter a and a son. Family. Yes, okay. it's okay. a blended family. Okay. Okay. How, do you, how do you balance um, being you know, busy entrepreneurs and having such a busy family? How do you do that? Well, it's a juggling act most days uh, between picking up kids from school and gymnastics and coming to the swim Nikki team Clark show yeah <laughs> it's one of those pieces you know uh, we truly believe in setting an example for our kids that if this is something you really want you find a way to do it and you do it and so you know what some days we do pick up the phone and go did you get the kids you know what's going on but it's one of those things you just yeah. keep doing it until you know you do it Going back to the GEM Expo, that started three years ago, right. and um, who was involved in that? Who can participate? It's mainly uh, vendors from Toronto, but it's now actually growing to be an international show. So we've got vendors coming from Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, Nepal, Ethiopia. Ethiopia. Uh, so we're getting vendors from all over the place. We have a lot of local artists as well who make their own jewelry, so you find a lot of handcrafted jewelry there. A lot of unique pieces uh, that you won't find in places like Winners and uh, the Walmarts. Okay, and and uh, these are some of the pieces. Can you describe, um, say, this one here? Yeah. I have my eyes on that. Yeah. So all my pieces are uh, made by me. They're all one of a kind pieces. I never replicate anything. So the piece you're talking about, which is this piece on top, okay. it's uh, glasswork done by a, a Toronto artisan. And it's all, each glass piece is done by hand. And this is a Tumbaga uh, Hamsa. And as a lot of people know, Hamsas are a form of evil eye. So it keeps the evil eye and evil thoughts away from you. And so this one's a Tumbaga, which is gold over copper. And it's just one of my favorite pieces. Along with... Caught my eye right away. Yes. And <laughs> as long... Another one. Yeah. And this is done by a Vancouver artisan. And she makes each glass piece by herself. And so right now, and for a while, it's been the focus has been um, the Hamsa, which is really something that we find spiritual and really believe in. Okay. Uh, Hamsa is part of which culture? It actually goes across every faith, okay. uh, Judaism, Hinduism, uh, Islam. So you'll find it in any faith, and it always is the same thing. It's to ward off the evil eye or evil thoughts, and it's really meant to stop people from you know, projecting evil thoughts. Manifesting them. Yeah. Yeah, thoughts. Um, do you find that there's a spiritual shift and it's a reflection uh, in, in what we wear um, and, you know, the jewelry pieces? For sure. Semi-precious stones have some qualities to them, so people are really being mindful of, of what they're wearing, what yeah. they're adorning. And, you know, um, in all the studies that I've done is people tend to be drawn to a stone that they need in their life. When I lost my brother, the stone that I kept going back to over and over was pink, pink quartz. It just kept going, you know, it didn't matter what it was, it was pink quartz. Every time I made something I, and I looked at it, it was pink quartz, pink quartz, black onyx. So we'll find anyone that picks up a stone, it's the stone that they need in their life for their qualities. Okay. And the pink quartz, was that for healing? It was healing, okay. yeah. Okay. What, what uh, can you wear for money? Pardon me? Money. What can you wear to like, generate prosperity or money? It, it's citrine. Citrine. So you'll, in my wallet, if you open my wallet, even my kids' piggy banks, you find a piece of citrine, which is a prosperity stone. Okay. So a lot of people will put a piece of citrine in their pocket, with their wallet, in their purse, anywhere you're looking to do that. 
Uh, tell me about Blue Sapphire Beads. When did you start that business? Blue Sapphire Beads started 13 years ago. It, I started it out of necessity. I was a single parent and needed to supplement my income somehow. And so I started making a few pieces and it just sort of took off and this is where it is now. Fantastic. How many years deep? How long have you been doing this? 13 years. 13 years. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Fabulous. And how did you uh, connect with Celine? Well, we got together, I guess, four years ago. Four years ago. <laughs> um, and she kind of... Was it at a jewelry convention? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, after we met, I mean, I got interested in her jewelry right away. I saw the, the quality of uh, products she was making, and it attracted me. And uh, ever since then, I've started picking up uh, jewelry making as well. So I do a little bit of silversmithing as well myself. That's fantastic. So you make a really powerful team. <laughs> Great. So tell us again, uh, the Gem Expo is coming up in March. What date and where is it going to be right. located? So the next Gem Expo is March 13th to 15th. It's held at the Hyde Regency, which is at uh, King and Spadina. All the information on the show is available at thegemexpo.com, as well as our Facebook page, The Gem Expo. Okay, excellent. All right, well, I want to thank you again for this thank beautiful you. gift. Thank you. And uh, you're doing a, a fabulous job. I really love what you do. And um, I will be there uh, March 13th. You'll see me. Yes. Perfect. Thanks. Friday. Looking forward to seeing you. Thanks again. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. So, thank you very much. The Nikki Clark Show, transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com. segment and I'm very happy to uh, have the lovely uh, Anika Reed here to the show. Please welcome her. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. You're, the, you're the founder and chief designer of uh, Candy Apple Couture and uh, you're a mother and you're a blogger. You do, you wear many hats uh, but I absolutely, you know, fell in love with your pieces 2007 when I first saw them at a fashion show and I'm really happy that you're here to show a little bit of your pieces. So tell me a little bit about uh, the line. What was your inspiration for starting Candy Apple Couture? Okay, Candy Apple Couture is actually a brand that was created off of the namesake of my grandmother, which was her name is Mavis Candice e. Adams <laughs> and my middle name is Candice as well. Um, and it just was inspired by, I would go shopping and there were a lot of things in the stores that just didn't really reflect my, you know, the, the, my eclectic style and I just felt like, you know, for uh, being a plus size woman there wasn't a lot of options and so I decided to create that brand and okay. that's how that, that kind of got rebirthed or birthed at the time. Okay, yeah. that, that's understandable. And now you, you also have a blog, a style blog. Yes, so recently. And that's doing very well, so yeah, congratulations. Yeah, I have a very strong following, um, very strong on Instagram and a really heavy um, following on my, uh, on my website. And it's really just started at birth June of, this, of last year. And I was just, I, I follow a lot of other plus size style bloggers and I just kind of felt like I have a strong knowledge in fashion. I'm actually continuing my education in it going forward and I had a lot I wanted to say and also add and kind of put my stamp on, on you know, just highlighting things for my Canadian fashionistas more is who it, mainly I was beginning to target. But I seem to be getting a really strong following in the UK and in the US recently as well. So that's it just amazing. took on a life of its own. Yeah, it's that's cool. amazing. And, and you know, being, um, being a mom too is a lot. I am. Of juggling and, and you have a, an exceptional daughter. I do. I have a nine year old daughter. Her name is Anaya and she's diagnosed with autism at the age of two and a half. And um, it has been challenging, but it's also been really rewarding to see the stride that she's made. So um, a lot of the, pro well, not a lot of the proceeds, but when you do purchase um, something from my website, uh, either from the closet sale or from directly my new line, 5% um, of those go to Autism Speaks, which is a organization that we support. And we also do the walk each year um, in support of a program called Toronto Partnership for Autism Services, which is a program that provides free IBI service, which is key for children, early intervention for children with autism. And that's okay. a program that really helped pull out my daughter's personality. So yeah. it's something we support. Well, that's fantastic. I applaud you on that. Mm -hmm. uh, so you're wearing something that's, that's really beautiful, and you, and you have some great pieces here. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of um, like an Afrocentric kind of uh, value to it and yes. beauty to it. And, and I, I guess a lot of the pieces are 
uh, directly from Africa, right? Yes, okay. we actually uh, started a new line in partnership with another lady. Um, we call it Mini Maxi Midi. Okay. And it's a, mainly a skirt company. Okay. Um, and that's also another line that we just created last year. And so we're coming out with a line where basically mini skirts, maxi skirts, and mini skirts. Okay. And you can get it in. Uh, bold prints such as these. Uh, we're coming in different um, patterns, shapes, colors. Uh, we also do body conscious style, so more fitted. Or uh, we also do flare, and uh, we're gonna be expanding and doing more sash and more um, more dressier styles actually coming okay. up as well. Okay, so can we take a look of at Of course, so this is one of the pieces. Um, these, is, these are some of our sample pieces. It's actually gotten, it's nice. actually become like a bit this. more embellished since then, and we've sold out of those. These were the first run that we did, and um, they, they all come with pockets. We thought that was really important oh, nice. in a thick waistband. Okay. Yep. And um, these we did with an elastic waistband, but the second generation that we've sold out already, we've actually added a sash to it to make it much more uh, cleaner and mm -hmm. dressier, so nice. that someone can compare it with a shirt or a body a bodysuit, or just to be a little bit more. Um, trendy with it so oh, nice but these seem to be doing quite well and we're really oh, excited like this about one that's kind of a an emerald green yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is real, this one did really well for the holidays this was a really great emerald green and this is a midi skirt i love it all okay. covered pockets and the final style that we have and i think we have a few models as well that will be coming shortly but this is also like a see-through number Ooh. that we did and it did really well Very sexy, yeah, yeah it was a nice fitted bodycon maxi skirt that goes all the way down and it hugs the ankles um we paid really close attention to detail when creating this so if you notice this skirt actually goes in on an incline so that it hugs your ankles i don't know if a lot of women have this issue but like when you create when you wear like a fitted mini skirt and sometimes the bottom stretches and it doesn't really hug and give me that nice cigarette look that you like. So we uh, really paid close attention to that one. Yeah. I noticed patterns. you did that. You, you know, really pay uh, close attention to detail. Yeah. And also, um, you really work with the, the, the woman's body and, and to you know, flatter the body. Uh, so you, you cut yes. and tailor your pieces very well. Very important. And like what we did with this line, because with Candy Apple Couture, as you know, was more focused on plus size. But with this line, we didn't want to exclude. So we we it's offer sizes all the way inclusive from, line. Exactly. So okay. from extra women who wear size extra small all the way to 3X can order from okay. Mini Maxi Midi. All right. So we have a couple of beautiful models. Yes, we do. Uh, who are going to show us some pieces. Models, are you ready? Okay. Come out. Come on out. Ooh, so who do we have? So this is one of our body con styles. Thank you so much for modeling. And this has actually been one of our best sellers. This look actually comes in a maxi, which we sold out of, and a midi skirt, and this is the mini that she's wearing. I like. Very simple. Do you what, like? I, what I really like about it, as you can see, she's a really beautiful, petite woman, and, and it really hugs her curves nicely. If you don't mind, if I can just kind of show them. The thick waistband, which is really important. It's really great, great for hugging your body, and it hugs your curves beautifully. Thank nice. you. Thank you, Silvana. Who's next? Ooh, Ooh, I like the belt. Ooh, look how she did that. Okay, I'm always down for accessories. Um, so again, oh, this is one of our emerald skirts that we just showed. This is the mini version. And um, we, this also comes with pockets and a thick waistband. And as you can see, she was able to pair it with accessories. Awesome. Beautiful. Who's next? And Ooh. thank you so much. This is my girl, Michelle, from Sexy Jane Michelle. Nursing. And what I love about, she's wearing a similar pattern as mine, but she's wearing the um, maxi version to it. As you can see, it has pockets, and both of ours have pockets. Um, I'm wearing the midi length, and she's wearing the maxi length. Again, thick waistband. Beautiful. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, ladies. Absolutely gorgeous. Uh, beautiful pieces. Where can people find you to get them? Okay, so for my blog, you can find me on Facebook, um, Candy Apple Couture, C-A-N-D-I-A-P-P-L-E Couture, all one word. And you can find us both my Instagram and my Facebook name. For Mini Maxi Midi, we have Facebook and there's a direct link to shop with, with us there. And it's Mini Maxi Midi. So M-I-N-I-M-A-X-I-M-I-D-I. -I -I -I. All one word. I know it sounds long, but um, I'm sure the links will be provided with Nikki. Yeah, absolutely. Show. Always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. You are amazing. Thanks again. Thank you. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. The Nikki Clark Show. Transforming lives one story at a time. If you would like to be a guest or become a part of our live studio audience or even to become a sponsor, just go to www.nikkiclarknetwork.com.